Hey guys, I'm Heather Darnall and welcome back to my art channel. I'm so glad to be painting with you again. We were on a much needed family vacation and we had to put the house up for sale. So it was just kind of chaotic at the time. So thank you so much for your patience. And to my new subscribers, oh my goodness, you guys, what a pleasant surprise when I opened up YouTube and I just saw this big old jump in subscribers. So it made my day, especially when I was gone. So thank you again for your subscribing and I really hope you enjoy my channel. But today's painting, I wanted to do something springtime related as always because it is springtime but um i instead of doing a flower which i will do one of those tutorials in the near future but instead of a flower i wanted to do the honeybee i mean isn't that springtime related i mean that's when they're out buzzing around and pollinating flowers it's making everything beautiful um but yeah i just i can't get over them if you haven't guessed i used to be a beekeeper and what a wonderful experience my goodness what a wonderful experience and so if you haven't figured out, I'm on my soapbox right now. I'm just going to stay up here for another minute or two. But I think they are just the most fascinating, marvelous creatures that God put on this earth. I mean, they are just by, they live in the tens of, they live by the tens and thousands in this super confined area with so many duties and responsibilities in the hive and outside the hive. Yet they work in complete harmony, 24 seven, everything's super seamless. And it's like, how do humans not work the same way? I mean, talk about teamwork. There is no alpha in there. Everybody has a role and they do it with ease. Um, but aside from that, the fact that God made this one creature, this one insect out of all the millions and countless insects he's put on this earth, one makes an edible food for us that tastes delicious. It's super healthy. It's used in various cosmetics. Uh, all natural cosmetics and it's even used for a variety of medicinal purposes so i mean isn't that epic isn't that mind-blowing which by the way stay tuned for the end because i have even more epic mind-blowing fun facts for the honeybee because if you didn't think they're super cool now i'm pretty sure after you hear those your mind will be changed at least i hope it will um so yeah but i just really thought again it was super fitting and the fact that we are blessed with such a wonderful creature and the benefits of honey how fitting would this painting uh, be to have something that comes from the Bible verse that I'm going to make relative to what we're doing today, which comes from the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 24. You probably heard it because it's so uplifting. And it reads, gracious words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the body. Well, I couldn't agree anymore. I mean, really, when you hear gracious words when someone says something so nice to you doesn't it isn't it so uplifting it affects your soul and it makes it contagious i mean you want to go out and do the same thing to somebody else because it's set in think about that god put it in our heart to have the capacity to love and to say kind and gracious words so that we can be uplifting to our brothers and sisters in christ which is what we are you and i are brothers and sisters in christ and so we are put on this earth to reflect his example of being loving the way he is to us unconditionally. And so by just doing simple little things, by saying kind and gracious words, you are motivating the person and helping your own soul as well as theirs that reflects a healthy mind, which then reflects a healthy body. You guys talk about good things. I mean, there are so many wonderful things that we are blessed with. And I have a small duty too to follow Christ's example like this one. All right, guys, let's go to the table, and learn how to paint that beautiful honeybee. I'm beginning my project by drawing in a light sketch of my honeybee, starting with its head, which is triangular in shape, followed by the midsection or the thorax, which is circular in shape, maybe even slightly oval, and then the abdomen, which is about twice the size of the thorax, and is even more oval in shape with a pointed end. For now, with the legs, I just draw in the lines for their shape and placement. When I've completed all my details and am satisfied with my sketch, I go ahead and draw in my lines in darker so they'll stand out more when I paint. You'll see the wing towards the back is about a 45 degree angle and the wing towards the front is about an 80 to 85 degree angle and is about half the width of the back wing. Now for the legs, take note they're not just lines. Bees have shape and joints just like we do, so which is why they're drawn in segments. Believe it or not, they have a little feet too, which by the way are super cute and those suckers can grip. Here I'm using my number three round brush, outlining and filling in the head with the base coat of Mars Black. After filling in the compound eye or main eye, 
I continue to fill in the base coat, but leave a very thin line of empty space around it so I can keep its shape and know where I can finish its details with other colors. Using the same brush, I use a tidbit of raw sienna towards the top and custard cream below and around the compound eye, which may be a little hard to see for now. For the thorax, I switched to my number 6 filbert brush, also filling it in with the base coat of Mars Black. Back to my number 3 round brush, I continue to fill in the legs since it's a detail brush. You'll see I don't completely fill in the rear leg and some of the feet due to the details and colors that will be used later, which I'll explain more as we get closer to that. Now I'm going to use my 3 16 inch Deerfoot brush using the color Custard Cream, just lightly stamping it into the thorax area. I continue to stamp more Custard Cream on the head, leaving areas black for shadowing. Here I change brushes again using a small comb brush to achieve the fine hair details starting with the raw sienna. I'm beginning on the thorax details because the fine hair details on the head overlap onto the thorax so it's just easier to start with the thorax so I can brush those fine hair details over from the head with ease and not have to go back and fix anything. Back to my Deerfoot brush I'm gently stamping in Mars Black and Custard Cream which looks mostly gray on camera but it does have a yellow tint. This is to give the top of the thorax sort of a bald spot so to speak. Honeybees age just like we do, and the more veteran bees start to go bald, whereas newborn honeybees, they're covered in little blonde hair, so this little lady has some age on her. How I know this is a female bee will be disclosed later with the fun facts. So here's the comb brush again, and is where I'm adding more fine hair details on the head with raw sienna, Mars black, and custard cream. I apologize my hand is in the way, but hopefully you get the gist of what I'm doing. I'm basically just doing quick and short upward brush strokes to make it look like it has little hairs. It's kind of hard to see some of the custard cream details because they're so light, especially against a white canvas, but you'll see them better against the darker hair and base colors. Here's where those fine hairs are overlapping into the thorax, which is why I focused more on the thorax first. And yes, I'm painting fine hairs within the compound eye. They're mostly towards the bottom. Their little hairs act as little feelers and also help catch some pollen when they're rolling around in the flowers. I'll include a close-up of their eyes so you'll have a better idea of what I'm doing and why. I 
I changed brushes again to my number zero round brush using the color Quinacridone Nickel, if I can ever say that right, which looks sort of like a dark rust color um, for the mandibles or the mouth opening. I also use Mars Black for shadowing and Custard Cream for highlights. I go back to the compound eye and put a little Mars black down before I add a smidgen of titanium white for the highlights within the eye so it blends nicely with wet on wet paint. I'm basically doing upward brush strokes and bringing it down a little to the right. Think of painting the shape of a hook or even a candy cane. Here's the small comb brush again and I'm adding the rest of the fine hair details to the thorax using the colors raw sienna and custard cream. Now I'm going to move along to the abdomen and fill it in with raw sienna using my number 6 filbert brush. For the striping on the back, I use Mars Black with my number 3 round brush. I switch brushes again to my small comb brush, starting with quinacridone nickel towards the base, followed by cadmium yellow deep hue and a little bit of custard cream, just alternating colors doing quick back and forth brush strokes, but keep the rear end more yellow.
onto the wings, I go back to my number six filbert brush and fill them in with titanium white and then add just a smidgen of neutral gray number five to give it a bit of a shadowed look, yet a hint of a reflection appearance at the same time. Take note, I painted titanium white over my pencil line so it softens them up a bit. Here I'm using my number zero round brush and doing a semi outline to the wings as well as the fine details within the wings using quinacridone nickel. And if I'm butchering that name, anyone, just feel free to correct me before I further embarrass myself. Now where the wings attach to the thorax, I'm using Mars Black and a little bit of titanium white for highlights. Now I'm adding the overlapping fine hairs on the thorax using custard cream and decided to fill the thorax out a little bit more with raw sienna, as well as adding a little more fine details to the head. I switch to my number zero round brush again and fill the rest of the rear leg in with Mars Black. You'll see I add some fine hair details to the legs as well with custard cream, which are also overlapping and is why I waited to fill this portion of the leg in until closer to the end. I add some highlights to the legs using titanium white and fill in between the joints with custard cream. Now for those super cute itty bitty feet, I fill them in or really outline them in since they're so tiny using quinacridone nickel. Take note the lower rear portions are triangular in shape and they have teeny looking toes too. Just three.
For the comb, I use a 50-50 mix of cadmium yellow deep hue and an iridescent rich gold. You'll see a gently stamp or press into the bubble wrap, which is only about an inch and a half or so, along the edge line of the canvas, which is what gives me that honeycomb appearance. So after I did that, I thought to myself, well, it would be smart of me to show you how I painted the bubble wrap. So all I did was just apply a generous layer of paint along the bubbles using my number 12 filbert brush. Take note, I left one side empty so it's easy for me to lift off the canvas. Now I'm going to paint some dripping honey from the honeycomb, but I had to add some water to thin my paint down to a fluid consistency since it was similar to a soft body consistency before. But what I'm doing is just dropping some paint where I want it and then I lift the canvas up so it will roll down, which unfortunately you don't want to see that part, and then lay it back down when it's as far down as I want it. You'll see I added a little more dripping honey, but I've also switched back to my number zero round brush again, and I'm going to paint in Proverbs 1624 with a metallic color called Pearl Marmalade using a 3 8 inch letter stencil. For the last of the details, I'm still using my number zero round brush, but I'm going to paint the antenna using the color black. The antenna, by the way, are what the bees smell and feel with. Okay, here we are on to those mind-blowing fun facts. Actually, I just want to tell you right quick before we get started that the honeybee's formal name is Apis mellifera. Okay, fun fact number one, and like anything else living capable of reproducing, there are males and females. Worker bees are females and live for six weeks, and drones are males that live for four months. Talk about a huge difference in time. Females work themselves to the point where it shrinks their lifespan from guarding the hive, cleaning the hive, foraging, and tending to the queen, whereas males just literally eat and mate. <laughs> stuff their face and go fornicate. <laughs> Since they don't do much, they live longer. Fun fact number two, worker bees have five eyes, two large compound eyes, and a cluster of three tiny eyes on the top of their head that collectively help them understand and distinguish distance, direction, colors, and quantity of food and water sources. Drones also have five eyes, but their compound eyes are so big that when you look at it, it almost looks like it's swallowing their face but they're so big because they must be able to spot a queen in flight in order to mate. And unfortunately, after the drone mates, he dies. Fun fact number three, worker bees have stingers while drones do not. After all, like I said earlier, they're not doing anything, so they don't need to have one. 
Fun fact number four, worker bees can travel several miles from their hive. Some experts claim to be roughly as much as six to seven miles and find its way back home no problem, even when there's a cluster of hives together. They know which one is theirs by scent. Fun fact number five, queen bees live to a whopping three to five years. Not weeks, not months, years. <laughs> their only job is to lay eggs, which are about 1,500 a day. So she has no time to do anything else. Even clean up after herself when she relieves herself or feed herself. So that's where the workers come in. They take care of her, full on take care of her. And the queens are fed an entirely different diet than the workers and drones, which is called royal jelly and is why they're able to live so long. And it's also why royal jelly is considered a superfood in the human diet because of all the health benefits, which I will list in the description. Fun fact number six, queen bees are responsible for the overall hive temperament. Like I mentioned earlier, there is no alpha in the hive. No one dictates any jobs or how to do them. That's simply wired into the honeybee's instinct to do what needs to be done in an orderly fashion for the sake of their survival, but the queen just dictates their mood or the behavior of all of her daughters. Generally, European honeybees are very docile and gentle. And if you remember, I showed some photos of me in the intro not wearing any protection. That's because we had Italian honeybees. And of course, we all know that Africanized bees are super aggressive and can even be deadly. But believe it or not, some people seek out Africanized bees because they are actually better honey producers. But typically, those beekeepers have a large property away from neighbors and such that would cause anyone harm. Fun fact number seven, worker bees have two stomachs. Two. <laughs> One to carry the nectar from the flower to the hive, while the other is to digest their food, like anything else, which is honey, pollen, and sugar water. Fun fact number eight, the workers have a special enzyme that breaks down the nectar when they regurgitate it into their self-made wax cells in the hive. And then the bees fan their wings, which help evaporate the water content out of the nectar, which makes it highly concentrated and nutritious. I know, I know, it's, it sounds gross and it's really weird to know that honey is technically bee barb. <laughs> Fun fact number nine, workers visit thousands of flowers a day in their six-week lifespan and only make a little less than a teaspoon of honey, which only three weeks or so are actually spent foraging. The first three weeks are spent inside the hive doing other duties before veteran foragers will coach and train the newer bees. Fun fact number 10, workers can see colors, especially blue and purple hues, but they see red as black. Fun fact number 11, workers are trainable. That's right, just like your dog or cat, they too are trainable. As a matter of fact, they're currently used in various international airports to sniff out drugs and bombs. Talk about discreet little creatures who are also super cheap to feed and care for compared to dogs. Bees are also trainable in minutes versus months with dogs. Fun fact number 12, workers have facial, voice, and scent recognition, which is why you see many beekeepers without suits, just like you saw me without any protection. Their bees know and trust their keeper like a dog knows his owner. There's a mutual respect and even a friendship. Fun fact number 13, Workers communicate with each other by doing what's called a waggle dance, which is similar to flying in the shape of a figure eight. This is to tell the other bees about their sighting of food and water, even in the amounts. They're able to communicate direction and distance. Fun fact number 14, bees flap their wings about 200 times per second. Fun fact number 15, workers can carry their own weight. So imagine physically running all day long, all day long, morning, noon, and night. <laughs> like they do flying and having the ability and strength carrying your own weight the whole time you're running. That's why the honeybees need all that sugar for carbs and pollen for protein. And for the last fun fact, number 16, which guys, I have tons more. You have no idea how hard it was to just narrow it down to this many, but the workers can sting other insects many times, but can only sting a human once. Their stinger gets stuck in our flesh, which rips out of their body when trying to retract it and it kills them, which is also why they'll only sting when they feel absolutely threatened. Otherwise, when they fly around you, it's really because they're attracted to the color of the clothes you have on, smell something that could benefit them, or are seeing if they recognize a familiar face. So don't swat, otherwise that will make them feel threatened. Okay, guys, that concludes the mind-blowing fun facts about our beloved and endangered honeybees. And of course, the painting. Also keep in mind that there's more imposter honey being made than the real honey due to the high demand for it. There simply aren't enough bees to produce enough honey to keep their existence on this earth 
as well as feed the millions of hungry people who want some. So if you ever see a jar of honey, usually quart size, that's priced for $25, that's actually a very reasonable price considering the sheer purity of it, as well as the labor from the bees to produce it and the keeper to harvest it. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments, whether it's about art or even beekeeping, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And I really enjoyed painting with you as this was also a trip down memory lane for me and something to look forward to again later down the road. Also, FYI, all my paints and supplies are listed in the description if you're interested in purchasing or just checking them out for consideration for future use in one of your projects. Alrighty, so if you liked the tutorial, please be sure to not only share, but to also hit like and subscribe for more videos. But more importantly, remember to thank God for this opportunity and always paint from the soul.